at this moment, we're going to start to set up the scene so that we can render uh, using Arno rendering on this model. Now, on this model, we are not going to uh, do more complex color, just a single color. Think about like this is just a maquette for a uh, model um, to be prototype later on. So now, before we do rendering, let's change the scene scale so that we can um, make the size of the helmet into the size we um, we prefer or for reference as a real world sizing. Um, what you need to do is um, you go to a window menu and setting slash preferences preference under setting right here right now is centimeter which is fine you can use centimeters but uh, for uh, for this exercise we're going to change it to inch save there you go and you can think of the grid is one square inches. So if I like to have this tall as a seven inches, you maximize it. You tap space bar and changes to sized view. There we go. And when I select the model, I can turn on scale two right here and scale uniformly by grabbing the uh, the center cube, cube right here. If I look at on perspective view, can you see this is the cent center cube? So you just tap space bar to minimize or maximize, uh, maximize your viewport. And also, if you move your cursor over each viewport, like for example, we can go to font view, move your cursor to font, tap space bar, will maximize that viewport. So I'm gonna dolly out, alt key, right mouse button to dolly, and uh, alt key with middle mouse button to move things around, and um, dolly with a left mouse button is to tumble, but we can't do it on the other graphic view. It works with the perspective view only. Okay, so I'm gonna scale it uniformly and I can think of okay you can make the height it's about seven grid which is one inches right oh which is seven inches because one square inch is one grid so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten <laughs> might go to ten well that's okay ten is good and then we turn on move to and move it up to the ground plane. Okay, looks like that. So just floating in the air is fine. Um, I can make this a little touch right there. There we go, right there. Okay, so this is the ground plane, and this is good. Now, um, let's check the actual size of this. So I am on site view. You go to create menu, mensure tools, distance tool. There we go. What distance tool does is allow you to place one first locator to indicate the beginning. Um, so I'm going to put it right here, one, and the other locator will be the end. So now, this is what I like you to try. Hold shift key though. Hold shift key. And then move your cursor right here. And then click, make sure you hold shift key, click on it to place. And can you see? It will use that reference, but constrain the line to be straight. Okay, while you holding shift key, 
now it gets about 9.25 inches. So this is fine. And we can just leave that measurement through there. It's not going to render. Okay. So now we're going to create a black, uh, sorry, backdrop, like a photo booth. And um, something like this. Hold on. Let me show you the picture right here. So we're going to create a mimic, a backdrop like this one. And uh, most likely, um, it's going to be similar setup like this. And we have light from a uh, key light can be from the top or uh, 45 degree from the front view. And then we have fill lights. Fill lights can be more than one. And then we have backlit to separate the background. So and, um, this one is another setup that you can see. Can you see key lights and fill light both side? And um, now there's a backlit because of this light casting to the surface and bounce off. And lights from here bounce it there and just keep bouncing off to on the surface. Now in the uh, this is from the real world. One more example. Okay. So but in 3D we have to uh, set up more than just what we saw on the uh, actual ref, uh, actual um, light box for photo shoot. Okay. So um this is what I want you to do. I like you to use a polygon model so it's under create menu and um you know what hold on let's use nerves for this project no 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 polygon sorry my bad so use a um polygon plane right here this button it's right there on the bottom it's too small so if you are on perspective view you can click to activate it Switch to wireframe mode. Okay. Oh, I know what happened <laughs> because it's so dense. It's right here. That one. So wireframe mode would work. Just select it. And under polyplane, okay, we're going to make the width a little larger so we can just highlight both width and height. Mini mouse drag to scale up. Can you see? There we go. And make it really big. It's about there. How about just type it in uh, 30 inches. And we're going to make it longer. So the height is the length here. So meter mouse drag. How about type it in 60. Double up. Look like this, right? Okay. And now we're going to move this a little bit right here. Okay. So, and we're going to dull in like this. Okay. So, now let's create a camera. Oh, no. We can just use perspective view. Um, I just want to make it a little easier for you guys. So under view menu, bookmark, edit bookmark. So we're going to create a new bookmark. So that is captured this view. Uh, before we doing that, let's turn on under view menu, camera setting, turn on resolution gain first. Here we go. And now this is a resolution case. So it means within these boundary will be rendered. But outside, no, will not be rendered. Uh, one more thing. Go to view menu, camera setting, and turn on a fit vertical so that we can see the top. Now, right now, is still using a um, HD 540. Um, sizing so we need to change 
go to render setting before we do bookmark we're gonna choose Arno renderer if somehow the Arno doesn't display right here you need to go to window if Arno does not appear right here you need to go to window menu and setting slash preferences plug in manager and try to find Arno it should be somewhere down here it's a plug in here we go M2A Arno make sure it's load and auto load check okay mine is already there and after you switch to the Arno renderer look at under image size click on it and I like you to change to a um we can do a letter so letter size will be 3000 is 300 pixel okay we can reduce a little bit before you reduce just leave it 300 pixel this uh, this can render a little longer but you have to change to inches right there in order to be able to have Maya recalculate the resolution per inch and then I'm gonna put it's only uh, 150 and um, the reason is um, actually 72 sorry 72 not 150 because we are not do, doing printing so 72 ppi so now when I switch the two pixel you will get this can you see it's really small now now in another hand if you need to print this out you can switch to inch and change it to 300 again so now when I switch to pixel can you see it's 2000 so for this exercise switch to inches and 72 and switch this back to pixel um, you have to do switching Maya somehow since version 2018 um, these will correspond when it switched to inches the resolution uh, section here will not respond on pixel when you change it it will create a little weird calculation that is correct so make sure you switch to inches click close so now right now I am do vertically can you see so if you wanted to render in horizontal go back again there we go. what you need to do is you need to change here put 11 on width and so I'm gonna do like this control up and um, you just type 11 and 8.5 there we go so this will be a horizontal close okay so now let's see if I like this composition there we go. and um, now when you do render I like you to literally rotate your camera into different angles okay there's a reason so that when we fix our setting of the box think about in the real world here you either have a turntable object right there put your object on the turntable and then you rotate the turntable and in this case we don't have it so we literally will gonna move rotate oops Sorry, select select the uh there we go. And we're gonna literally rotate the object itself to have a different shot of angle, different angle shot. Okay. So this is what I'm gonna do, like that. So on the perspective view, you go to bookmark, edit bookmark, and it's already there. We're gonna create a new bookmark. It's called camera view. I can gonna call short one 
45 degree and go with the that's it and execute it okay and um you don't you don't have to uh, just click apply it's already there so now I'm gonna close this when you go to view bookmark and you see you have 45 so it means when you tumble your scene while you're setting up things and you can come back here view bookmark and choose short one 45 degree will snap it back save your file okay again control s or file save scene okay you can do save scene here too this button okay so now um select the um plane we're gonna bend it so that it looks like oops wrong <laughs> sorry <laughs> i have a news on it look like this bend it okay so this is what we're gonna do we're gonna right click choose vertex grab vertices right around here so and basically you're gonna bend it right now before we do that let's make it a little fall off double click on rotate tool soft selection turn it on make sure you choose surface okay right now it's fall off radius is set to two and can you see let me tumble this scene okay i want the fall off to be a little right here so that we can has a little soft bending so i can type how about 10 and 10 is go really less because it's a can you see only 10 units i can do 20 unit there you go let's come back here so now we can rotate like this can you see uh one um you can hold shift key so hold on so that is a uh, snap oh hold on my bad <laughs> grab only the uh uh reds let me undo quick i forgot to mention grab only the red circle here and rotate i can hold shift key so that it snap a little bit there you go. let go turn on move to right here and then move it up and move it up for, uh, move forward can you see here we go and um i think one uh 10 is a little too high so i have to move this up a little bit i want to have that curve can you see curve now turn double click on the move to again and then look at on soft selection turned off now we can move it down so basically I just like you to try to make it looks like a curve. There you go. Soft bending curve. Okay, can you see it right there? There you go. Now right click and choose object. And take a look at this. So it's look kind of smooth. If it doesn't look smooth, um you can press three. Three is display as a smooth. Okay. Press three on your keyboard. Three, number three. Okay. If you press two by accident, you will get a uh they call a uh smooth with proxy because the proxy is the uh, reference of the original plane. So switch it back to three. There you go. That's it. So now when it go to view on perspective view, go to book map switch back it looked like this so we want these to fill up the inside the frame so this is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna turn on scale 2 now and then scale this wider until it's come out of the frame that's it okay and now we're done with that setting so now we're gonna set the lights save your file again 
And um, when you look at right here, we're going to place the lights on top, side to side. And now be we will not get exactly like that unless we add more lights on the front because in the real world, all the lights are bouncing from the surface. You can see lit this surface will bounce up and depending on the surface it has a uh, lighter color and high shiny surface will bounce off more light okay so we're going to use Arnold to render this right so let me turn this off for a little bit so that I can get um, under Arnold menu you need to use only on all menu lights area lights you're going to use only area lights for this exercise there we go now right now area light is inside that can you scale a little bit make it bigger the size of the area lights will also affect the brightness so i'm going to increase a little bigger and now you can tumble your scene on your perspective view turn on rotate too and rotate and can you see when i rotate you will see the line right here these are the directional of the light so it's mean let me move it out quick and if i tumble my scene light will casting that way so we need to rotate it until that straight line show the directional the directional line show to uh, pointing up to the object so this will be a top lights okay and top lights can be key lights however in this project i will move the key light a little forward and when you look at on the side view it will look like this and then turn on rotate 2 you can press right here turn on rotate 2 and Grab the red arrow, oh no, red color, which is the S. So when I deselect, can you see it's point like this? There we go. It's point like this. And that's what we wanted. Okay. So now on perspective view, we can test a little bit by enable lighting right here. So we just want to see light. Okay. And save your file again. We're going to name this area light. I'm going to add area lighting. I'm going to name key area light one. We most likely going to have uh, more than one key light. And now open up a attribute editor. This button right here. Right here. Okay. So key lights and exposure not intensity but exposure we're going to use that so let's put it 10 see if lit up a little bit right there we go 10 okay now the color i don't like you to change this color we want a real world color turn on use color temperature now this is kelvin color temperature let me show you something cool Okay. It's look like this right here. Can you see? These are referencing thousand K Kelvin temperature, you get a little blue light, lower number will be more yellow more or orange in this so and this is the chart of the scale warm and cool now in sunny daylight will be cool color a little bit a little bit uh, a little bit opposite than what you would think that cool color would be uh, less brightness of the sun no it's just a Kelvin temperature it's not the uh, subtractive um, uh, color these are an additive color. There we go. Let me turn this on again. Can you see? 
clear blue sky, 1000. So we can think of this. If we want a LED light, we probably gonna have to go like white bright light. Um, we probably will need to go up from 7000 and up. Okay, so let's do that. I can do, I'm gonna just type how about 75, 100. Here we go. So now these are not uh, accurate lighting there. So we're gonna change by looking at an under Arnold open render view. Here we go. And on render view to save a little time to render, change the view under test resolution to 50%. So it's about 500 pixel. And we're gonna render perspective. Before you render, let's change perspective. Go to a bookmark, short one 45 degree, and click render. When you click play, it will start. So now, when we change the light, it will affect right away. So we want to leave this on. Can you see right there? A little too dark, so it's mean. Exposure need to go up higher. How about 30? Oh, <laughs> it's too bright, sorry. So 30, so 15. Here we go. Can you see? It's not too bad. Now, the only problem right here is actually is hot spot. Can you see that's too hot? So I would reduce it to 12. Too dark, sorry. So it's just the way it is. You have to keep playing around 13. I would do 14. That's good. 14 and cool color of the light right above the hand. Now the problem with this is the shadow here. Really pixelated. Let's change resolution to 1024. Basically, the resolution you want it to be matched or higher than the actual render frame. Can you see this is 792? So by 612. Let me maximize the view quick. There we go. So that up. Sorry, I'm I not I'm not maximizing because it's too big. So now we increase it, and then we have a sample. Increase the sample to ten. Here we go. Can you see a little softer now? Ten, but not yet. We have to fix the more. Is under rendering setting. Wait a little bit. Mine still render. It's going to take a little bit of time. There we go. So when it's done, it will set 100%. 23 seconds. It's not too bad. So now you're going to go to render setting, this button, under Arno renderer. We do not have fog. So volume in dialect, we can turn off to zero. Surface scatter, we don't have one. Turn it off. Transmit surface scatter is um basically um a, a scheme or transduction surface. Transmission is the glass and see through. We don't have it. We turn it off. Now specular and diffuse, we do have. Diffuse the color and diffuse also a bouncing light. Specular is the highlight and reflection, so we need those. Now, camera anti-alias, we need to bump it up at least six. Okay, so, and close it. Let me bring this back to, uh, I, I accidentally pressed two, 50% and, oh, hold on, still render. Now, if you want to stop rendering, you stop here. Click on that, and then I'm gonna uh, click one to one here. I don't know why my is so small now. 
let me go to render test to uh, 100 one to one render view and test to 50 percent one to one oh did i change something <clears throat> okay oh oh guys um just go 100 click on one to one there we go because it's a small size anyway so right now let's render again you should get less pixel uh, um, grain okay less grain now still rendering only 10 percent now when you increase that will take longer okay. to render and at this point it's not that bad right now so now we're gonna add feel like any gray color gray color gray colors mean there's no light rich at all gray to black now to make it be more a uh, three-dimensional look these are 2d dimensional so we need to add more light so right now, 98%, once again, when we turn off on AAA, it's going to increase the rendering time. Still 98%. It's as usual, you expecting on this final rendering, it could take 5 to 15 to 20 minutes. So when we have more light. Now, this is good. Okay. I want you to save this image in this buffer. So under uh, view, store snapshot click on it and it will be there we can save this too so right now we render only 50 uh, 50 percent can you see three nine six so it's smaller than seven okay so and at this point i like you to go to uh render setting one more time and reduce the camera AA to three so that's a little quicker for testing okay so we will come back and change this to six close so i'm gonna stop this rendering now add more lights so we're gonna create ano lights area lights again and i'm gonna rotate it so on this view i'm gonna rotate on blue color right there there we go scale it turn on Scale to scale, turn on rotate. Oops, because I didn't see where the direction of the lines is, and just move into this side so that we can see. Here we go. So, we're gonna move this light right around here. So, this will be feel like on the left. So, let's rename this. Now, if you are on Attribute Editor to rename it, you need to rename on the first tab. We're going to call L left, type left, fill area light. There we go. And then click on second tab. Now, we also going to use a color temperature. This time, if you like to have a little subtle color, we can make it a little more yellow. So um, 650 might be too bright, uh, too white. Let's do 6000. Okay. And resolution need to be 1024 again. And sample, we already know that we did 10, so we do 10 again, just synchronize them. Now the exposure though, this is what I want you to do first before you do anything else. Okay. Select the key light first. 
I want to turn it off here. So you can turn off illuminate by default. So that we can set control only on this field light. So now click render and wait until it's end so that we know how bright it is. So probably super dark because exposure is only zero. Hi right, guys, I have to pause the video because there was one thing that I almost forget. Um, the resolution of the shadow is too high. Let's bring it back to 512. And um, now sample you can leave is uh, 10. It's fine. There's a reason because otherwise the shadow might be competed with the key lights. So at this point, let's bring the exposure up to uh, 10. And now can you see it show up a little I think this is good what if we just move this object like a little closer just remember these are fake lighting so we move it closer let me change the viewport quick let's stop rendering quick here let's stop it temporary and bookmark shot because we want to see like that there you go so now let me render, play to render. This is good. See, it's lit. We just want a light lit. Let's try to bring it up one more. 11. So that's a lot of litting now. That's good. And this still shadow there. We might have to come and fix shadow later. So let's stop rendering. Now select the key light. I'm going to use this view to select, bring illuminate by default on, test render, see how it looks. Now the shadow is gone, that's the problem. Because of the resolution of this, can you see? 512 sample, reduce it to 1. Okay, it started to come back a little bit now. And I think it's too bright. So let's reduce the resolution of the shadow to half of it, uh, 256. See if the shadow come back. Now shadow doesn't come back. Well, we can reduce this to 10. Guys, I have to restart the record because of uh, there's something going on with my system um, it doesn't capture the shadow now this is my setting exposure 10 6000 resolution of the uh, shadow 556 really low so that sped up cast shadow now the volume sample uh, the sample you can do 1 or 10 I do 10 so that a little softer and it light now if your system because we use the same uh, image of the um, uh, system doesn't show the shadow don't get panic okay so what I need you to do is uh, shut this down save as we open the file and we do it again okay and you can enable on and off on the left and right so that is started to bring back the shadow it's something wrong with the uh, system not not like what we did wrong okay so this is how it look look like this okay so now these parts still have a little gray so we're gonna add another right side so let's stop rendering quick okay click stop and um you can go ahead create another one lights area lights and I'm gonna move it away a little bit scale it up here we go and look at the orientation we want it to cast like this this time I like you to angle it like this I want you to slightly hit in some degree 30 40 but it hit to the back also I want you to cast to the back 
Okay. And um, not not too much, just like this. Here we go. Like go pass through like this. And there's a reason we don't want these to hit to that ground right away because it's gonna bright that arc up. If it bright that up too much, uh, it's gonna be the the contrast of the shot on the back drop will be uh, similar to the uh, shape itself. We don't want that, so we want slightly angle. Just go through like this. Here we go. And now for the move it up, rotate it down, and if you know this is, I will grab the rotation only one exit at a time. This will give you maximum control the uh, location of the lights itself, uh, of any object basically. So right now, I'm gonna go to view, bookmark, go to my shot. Okay, so at this point, let me uh, scale this window down a little bit. Here we go. Um, on the screen, if it's hard for you to see where the light is, you can click this button, Outliner. Here we go. So you can double click and rename. One more time, I just double click on this area light. Gonna call right. Fill area light. Here we go. So so that we know what it is. And I'm gonna use a similar setting. So six thousand and two fifty-six sample. We can do ten for now. Okay. And um now we can test render again. Let me bring it back up. That one. And Perspective shape render. Okay. So it should lit a little bit. And if it's not enough, I might have to change the angle. We just want to lit a little bit. We want to see a little core shadow too. Okay. I'm gonna pause it until it's finished. Okay. I am coming back. I pause the video. This one take almost a minute. Can you see? 40 second. 40 second. This is half size of that. So when we render full size, it should be double. Plus, we haven't increased the AA rendering yet. Okay. At this point, is almost good. We still have some kind of gray color right there. So we need to lit it more by add more light from the font so this will be right on the font area here now if you screen a little slower when you move you might need to turn off lights temporary turn this off so that is a little quicker okay oh <laughs> stop rendering it's keep updating so here we go okay let's turn the lights back on Okay, that caused it, not because of this. My bad. So, one more lights. And I know lights, area light. This time we're going to move it out front to the front. Here we go. Scale it up. Okay. And direction is correct. And I'm going to move it a little higher. Look at on the front view like this. And I'm going to rotate it. Okay, this will be a little lighter. So we're gonna turn on color temperature. This time seven seventy five hundred. So a little white light. Okay. And uh exposure, let's reduce this to two fifty six. Sample ten. Again, just keep it consistent for now. I mean when you do on your own you can do whatever you like. So we just want a little bit of lit. At this moment, can you turn all the lights off by select one at a time? Uncheck illuminate by default. Here we go. Turn uncheck. Uncheck. Here we go. 
And for this one, let's call font feel like font feel like because they all try to fill up the lights. And um, under view, switch it back to a short uh, shot one forty five degree. So we can work on this. There's only one single light. I click play now. It says render. And um, so exposure. Let's do ten. Okay. And wait a little bit. It's lit a little. We just want a little lit. It's lit all the gray. I think in this way, I need to change the angle. Stop it quick. Stop rendering. Because we want it to lit this under and that under. So I forgot about that. So I'm going to rotate angle up like this and move it down. Okay. So this will be casting too. So now um, the problem with this is uh, let me zoom in again. <clears throat> this light, can you see? The trajectory will go like this and it will stop. Can you see from there to here? That will be blocked. So, in order to lit really close, we need to move the light. There we go. Like really close to the font. And there we go. Okay, that edge need to be above. So it's really close now. So ten might be too much, but we'll see. So let's change the viewport bookmark. There we go. And render. That's good. Just slightly lit. Can you see? I can do eleven. Let's see. Here we go. Lit like that. That might be too bright. 11. So, because think about we're going to add more other. Let's keep 11, see if it's too bright. If it's too bright, we're going to bring it down. Most likely, we're going to bring it down. I'm going to use Outliner to select each light. Let's turn off the uh, rendering for a moment. Turn it off. Key light, enable, enable, right? Enable. Okay, so now you test render. Now, once again, this is what happened. I think it's uh, my system caused that. Is um <clears throat> the shadow is not there. It should be. So stop. If you have the same problem, no worry. Just stop it. Save your file. And let's shut it down and re-render the scene. Because right now I have so many things running inside here. So probably memory was used up. So it doesn't show the shadow. It's no big deal. Okay. Oop. Hey guys, before I restart my system to get the shadow, can you select this shot? Shot one that we save and go to file save, but Save final image, you need to turn on save image option first. Make sure you enable use color management and apply gamma exposure. Here we go. So, otherwise, these will be really dark when you save. So now, file, click, close, save image. Here we go. And we're gonna save as a JPEG. So, and it's saved inside images folder. Can you see right here? Images folder. So, we're gonna call helmet test over. Okay, and I'm gonna shut down the system. Okay, I'm back. Now it's working again. It's uh, some bug. In my system, so um, I hope that this bug is not happening with um, your remote PC access also, because if it does, this is not going to work because you're gonna get confused. But now I'm done, so that's it. This is it.
going to be our rendering. So I'm not going to change anything else. Everything is good. So basically, just remember, only key light that has shadow 10, 24. Okay. Sample 10. All feel like, all three feel like will have sample 10, but resolution of the shadow will be really low. 256. That's it. Okay. So, and that's it. So now we're going to do a final rendering. So to do final rendering, we're going to go to view, test 100%. Okay. And everything else good. So I'm going to render about three different images. So render. Wait until it's done. Oh, wait, wait, stop. We forgot. We need to change the uh, render setting right here. Turn on camera AA to 6 and volume in delay. Um, now, diffuse, let's do 3 and specular 3 also. So that bounce like a little more. And that's it. This is going to take a really long, not really, but long time. Now, under red depth, can you increase the uh, diffuse to 2, specular to 2? Actually, hold on, not 2. Let's match this, 3 and 3. 3 and 3. And transmission we don't have, so put 0 on it. And transparency depth, put 0 on it. We don't have. Okay, so let's do those. Okay. And click close, render. I gotta. I'm going to pause the video, okay, because it's going to take a little bit of time to render and write. Oh, hey guys, it's really bug in here. Let's stop this quick. Can you see what's happening? It show only one, 100. Sorry, I stopped it too early. Let me shut this, this down. Save. Okay. And let's go to use a regular render view here, right there. Render setup. Oh, sorry. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Wrong folder. Uh, right here. Click this window. Render, and we're gonna go to render, render perspective view, and render. So the reason that I have to switch the render view. From Arno render to this render because to this window, regular window, it's just because something going on with my system, which I can't explain. I'm gonna pause the video until it's finished so that we don't have to keep watching this. Hi, all. I was unsuccessfully using a regular rendering. It keep crashing on mine, so I'm gonna go back to use Arno Renderer one more time. Change to perspective view and um, view test render need to be 100% and progressive refinement and that's it. Click render and then um, I'm gonna pause the video again until it's finished rendering okay ouch <laughs> it's incorrect again <laughs> come on okay file render let me make sure everything's correct camera perspective okay try it again here we go so I'm gonna pause the video again, okay? Alright, finally finished. It takes 16, almost 17 minutes to render this file size. I'm gonna click keep snapshot. There we go. So now we're gonna save this. Make sure save image option. You enable image um the pie. Apply color management enable apply camera slash exposure and then now you can save 
and you're gonna save as a JPEG. So um, a little weird here. Um, Maya give you this. I oh, know it's not Maya. So you have to add dot JPG. Oops, sorry. <laughs> My um, <laughs> I changed the um, language setting. JPG. So that it will save as a JPEG. If you put PNG, it will convert to PNG and so on. So save. Oh, got to rename. So I'm gonna call final render. Uh, final render. I'm gonna call 45 angle. Uh, 45 angle render. And then I'm gonna render another one. So I'm going to select the object, rotate it, let's stop the rendering. And I'm going to do, how about front view, straight up for a little, there you go. And then I'm going to render again. So now I'm going to pause the video. I'm not going to run this because I don't want to wait another 16 minutes, uh, 17 minutes, okay? So, but you got an idea. So that's it. For this lecture. Oh, before I go on, um, by default, when you have Maya, uh, Maya will render if you set up the project, will render inside your project directory, which is that 3D, and will put all the rendering image inside images folder. So we'll be in there. Okay, so that's it. I'm gonna stop now.